In this time series video, we're gonna be taking a look at the augmented Dickey Fuller, also known as the ADF test. What we're doing is going over the background behind this test, specifically like what is the null and alternative hypothesis and how we could utilize it with our time series data. And then after that, we'll jump into some Python code where I show you two different examples, one with stationary data and then one with non-stationary data. So that way you have some practical use cases with this test. So with that out of the way, let's dive into the ADF test. All right, let's jump into the augmented Dickey Fuller. And you'll often see this abbreviated as ADF. I'll say that all the time as well. And this is a formal test to see if a time series is stationary, right? And it's crucial for ensuring the data meets assumptions for different types of models like a REMA. Now, what you can do is you can combine this ADF test with ACF as well as PACF plots when you're working with time series data. Uh, I've covered both ACF and PACF plots on different videos on the channel. So if you aren't familiar with them, make sure to check that out. Also, what you should know, the null hypothesis, right, HO, is the non-stationary, right? It has a unit root. And the alternative hypothesis is stationary, which means it does not have a unit root. So what does stationary mean? Well, stationary means that the mean and standard deviation are not changing over time. No long-term trend or seasonality and does not have a unit root. And what is unit root? Well, a unit root is a characteristic of a time series that makes it non-stationary. ADF is considered a unit root test. Another unit root test that's pretty popular is KPSS, which will be covered in another video. And also, if you guys want to have additional information on unit root, I can make a video on that also. All right, so test information. Typically, what I want to do is set the significance level to 0 0.05. It's kind of industry standard. A small p-value, which is going to be under 0 0.05, suggests rejecting the null hypothesis, meaning that the series is stationary and does not include a unit root, right? And when we're running these tests, we want to make sure we try to get stationary data. So, for example, if you get a p-value of 0 0.02, well, that means our data is stationary. Whereas if you have the p-value of 0 0.12, data is not stationary. So how can we do this in Python? Well, we can use statsmodels.tsa.stattools and we can pass in to add fuller. And there are a few different optional parameters that you could utilize, right? Well, you could use max lag, regression, auto lag, store, as well as reg results. So we're gonna jump into implementing the add fuller in Python right now. So just make sure to grab a Python notebook and we'll be taking a look at an example of stationary as well as a non-stationary example and going over much more. So uh, let's start coding. All right, let's get started. Not much to import in this time. So import numpy as np, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and then from stats models, TSA, stat, tools, import, add fuller. Okay. Then we're going to set a random seed. So in other videos in this playlist, I don't know where this is exactly going to be, but we've used a few different data sets. We're just going to use something synthetic today. Um, it's going to be a pretty quick video. So we'll go over here and say np.random.seed. Put in a random seed, say 17. Doesn't really matter. Um, if you want to get the same results that I have, put 17. Then we're going to create some stationary data. So stationary data equals np.random.normal. Say size equals 100. Right. And then we're going to also set our non-stationary data. So non-stationary data. And then we're going to go over here. np dot come sum and then that in here yep and then just for a good old sake let's plot this data so we'll say plt dot figure set a fig size fig size equal what ten five that's fine nothing really too complicated we'll do some subplots plt dot subplot one two one, one, two, one, there we go. PLT.plot, PLT.plot, pass in the stationary data, which I completely butchered the spelling, so I'm just gonna put that in here. PLT.title, stationary data. 
All right, and then we're just gonna literally copy this code. We'll say one, two, two, pass in non-stationary data. And then just change that over here to non-stationary data, non-stationary data, and then plt.show. And just to show you, all right, our stationary data over here and our non-stationary data on this side of things. Okay, awesome. So what I wanna do now is show you how this works. So what we'll go over here is we'll talk about each of the different parts of the ADF test. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna say result equals or add fuller, add fuller, and then just pass in our stationary data. Now, what this will give us a result of is a tuple. Now, let me show you what this looks like. So print result, and here we go. And just taking a look at this, um, unless you know how everything's mapped, it's really not that helpful. So what I do is show you how we can access different elements by indexes. And then also what we can do at the very end is just assign these to variables. So let's do through both of those. So the first side of things is we'll just go over here and say print and we'll get our test statistic. So ADF test statistic. And the way you do that, let's go over here and uh, we do let's go over here to results and you grab the zero index. So this is going to be our test statistic right over here. And boom, there we go. Okay, now let's just look at index of one, which is gonna be our p-value. Now that's what I use the most with this. So just go here to your p-value and you'll see that also in future tutorials. Well, actually what we'll show you a little bit later is building out a function, but uh, you can see p-value very close to zero. Now I'm not interpreting it exactly right here when I build out the function in a second, how we will interpret it, but right now that's how you can do it, p-value. Okay. Uh, some of the other stuff in here, if this is helpful for you. So our next one, if we go to index of two, that is the number of lags. We'll go over here and say number of lags into two, right? Then what we'll do next is number of observations used in the test. So that'll be three. there okay then we'll have our critical values which it gives us critical values for one percent five percent and ten percent we'll throw that critical values and that's the easiest to identify in this tuple right you can see one percent mapped over there five percent mapped over here ten percent mapped right there and lastly, we're going to have our information criterion. And we'll go to that number five. And just put IC. So I'm not going to type all that out. 267.2. Now, what we can do, and I should say this is information criteria test. All right. So, what I want to do now is just show you how you can quickly um, break apart this tuple and assign it to different variables. So all you have to do, if you've never done this before, so just say ADF stats, P value, lags, and observations, critical values, I see best equals results. And this will break it up, right? Which is really awesome because now if I just go over here and I can print out this P value, You can see that's the same p-value that we had over here. So you can either grab the index, right? As I showed you right there, or you can just break this apart like this to get every data point that you specifically want from the result. All right, and what I wanna show you now is just a, a function that I tend to use because it's easier and you can kind of pack a few things in over here. And obviously if you wanna have other of these data points, right? You can throw them in if you really want to, just modify the code. But I'll show you something I use really quick because I use the p-value the most out of here. So we'll say is DEF, we'll call it ADF test, 
Then what we're going to do is pass in our series, our, our time series data, and we'll say results. And the reason why this didn't tab over is because I put DF instead of def. But regardless, we'll have a result over here, right? And let's just say add fuller, and then just pass in your series, right? And the first thing I want to do is print out the p-value. So what I'll do is just write a quick f-string. So f-string allows us to print out our p-value over here while still having our p-value. So p-value like this, right? And then over here, we'll say result one, which is our first index. Again, why I showed you, we have a result one over here, index value, p-value, right? So this just allows us to have the text p-value and then also pass in that result over here. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I have a full video on f-strings if you're new to those. Um, hopefully you aren't fully new while watching this video, but regardless, uh, it's out there and that's why I made it. So uh, we're gonna say if result one, is less than or equal to 0 0.05, right? So I'm just gonna use the 0, 0, 0.05 for the p-value. And uh, we can set a print statement. We can say print reject the null hypothesis data is stationary, right? And this goes back to what I talked about in the slides, the null versus alternative hypothesis. Then we can have else print over here. Do not reject or like fail to reject, fail to reject the null hypothesis. And I misspelled hypothesis above. So fix that really quick. Data is not stationary. All right, and then funny part is with my F string over here, should put the quote here at the end. It's a small typo. Um, anyways, why I have this over here, right? As you're transforming your data, let's say you wanna take a log transform or you look at differencing to make the data stationary. Uh, you can just run this function again and just check it out on this side of things. And not even think about it. Um, you'll get your P value and then it'll run this if else. So I find that kind of helpful and uh, you can literally just copy and paste this to different projects that you're working on as well. So what I want to do really quick is just test this with our stationary data and then our non-stationary data. So just go over here and say ADF test, pass in our stationary data, stationary data, right? And it gives us P value again, close to zero and reject the null hypothesis, the data is stationary. So that works. And then what we want to do is the non-stationary data. So grab that go over here to the non-stationary data, and then just pass this in on this side of things, and voila, fail to reject null hypothesis. The data is not stationary. So that's really it for the ADF test. Um, really practical to use. Again, use it with your ACF, DCF, if you wanna use the KPSS as well. Um, but again, all you gotta do essentially is import this in through stats models, TSA stat tools, right? Just remember, you'll get tuple results. Uh, if you want to get the p-value, right, go to the one index and highly recommend you just build a function if you really want to, right? Throw in your if else over here, grab your p-value. Or if you want to get those specific values where right, you can break up this tuple just like that. And uh, this is order, right? Your ADF stat, your p-value, lags, observations, critical values, I see best. And yeah, that's essentially it for the code. Pretty short, sweet, and simple for this one. Hey guys, appreciate you checking out this video on the augmented Dicky Fuller test. And if you gained some value in this video, whether it cleared up a concept or you learned how to utilize this, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're trying to upload two to three different data science focused videos every single week. And if you wanna continue with this time series playlist, I'm gonna link a few videos down below in the description, or you can click onto a playlist right over here.